basketball season won't be around forever. So get in on all of the action now with DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy sports. DraftKings is giving new players a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Claim your free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes when using code TBPN during sign-up. Playing daily fantasy basketball is simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Feel the sweat like never before. Every dunk, steal, assist means so much more with DraftKings Daily Fantasy lineups. Baseball fans, you may have missed out on season-long fantasy, so now is the time to get in on all of the Daily Fantasy action where DraftKings has even more ways to make it rain. With DraftKings, payday comes every day for players. So what are you waiting for? Head to the app now. Download the DraftKings app now and use code TBPN during signup. This week, DraftKings is putting you in the action with a free shot of millions of dollars in total prizes. That's code TBPN and you can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes only at DraftKings. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Spurs Cast, episode 610. My name is Paul Garcia, and I'm your host here on the Spurs Cast. Today I'll be joined by Project Spurs writer and social media manager Josh Paredes. In this episode, Josh and I will discuss the Spurs in their last four games, the remaining schedule the team has left, and what it, it will take to get into or fall out of the play in tournament. Let's go ahead and get started for this episode. Josh, how are you doing? Pretty good, Paul. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well myself. You know, we can't say the same about the Spurs. Um, you know, since I last recorded, they haven't won a game, man. Yeah. So uh, let's let's just jump right into this. Uh, let's go to the latest news on the team, how they're doing. Uh, so since I last recorded a week ago, uh, this this team is 0-4 right now. They're, they're in the midst of a five-game losing streak. And so um, let's go ahead and re- re- revisit uh, how they got to this these last four games and, and how they've lost all these four games. So I'm, 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 I'm describing uh, the first loss on, against Boston on, on last Friday as a horrible loss. Now, even though Boston was favored, the reason why I say it's a horrible loss for the Spurs is because they led by 32 points in this game. And so Boston made made a 32-point comeback. They forced overtime, and they ended up winning that game by three points uh, in overtime. Jason Tatum, as we know, you know, went off for 60 points. But again, that's a horrible loss, the fact that <laughs> San Antonio gave up a 32-point lead. Uh, then we um, then the next game uh, was on Sunday against the Philadelphia 76ers. They came to San Antonio. I'm calling this one a valiant effort loss because of the situation the Spurs were in. Uh, Philly, you know, came in fully healthy. They were favored by 10 points. They led by 17 points in this game. The Spurs were without Dejounte Murray, Jakob Pertl, and, and Demar Derozan, three starters. And yet, this Spurs team uh, forced overtime, and the Sixers barely escaped with a two point win. So again, that's more of a valiant effort loss. The Spurs did a good job in that game, even though they lost. Then um, you know, this next one I'm calling a Utah covered loss. Uh, just because the Jazz were favored by seven and a half in this game uh, in Utah on Monday, and th- they did cover, you know, they, they won by 11 points. Uh, they led by as many as 25 points in this game, but the Spurs actually played better in the second half. You know, they made it more competitive, uh, and, and the Jazz were missing um, both Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley. And then the last one was it was it was a bad loss for San Antonio. Um, you know, this is just basically your your your, your basic blowout loss. Um, you know, that uh, they lost by 32 points overall. Uh, again, in Utah on, on Wednesday, um, Utah led by 41. That's that's the second most the team has ever led on San Antonio this season. Uh, it was pr- pretty much over early. We saw in the, in the first half, Coach Pop pretty much took out a lot of the starters in the second quarter. <laughs> then they started the third quarter, but just midway through, he pulled them out again, and he just let the young guy, you know the young players finish. And, and the same situation here, uh, Utah was still uh, missing um, two of their, their best players in, in uh, Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley, and they still still got those two easy wins, basically. So yeah, so a- as this past um, four games went, the Spurs did go 0-4. What are your what are your similar thoughts on these last four games? Um, I mean, it, it's up and down, kind of like like this first season has been. I would say, you know, it kind of seemed like with that Boston loss, after after that collapse, I was thinking, well, maybe the gas is finally emptying, you know, like for good, because mm-hmm. it's like they're already so tired. But then they had the Philly, and they went down 17, like you said, and 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 then they made that comeback. I'm like, okay, now that they lost this one, maybe <laughs> their gas is empty because. 
when they faced Utah, they had no answers for anybody. Bogdanovich, Ingles, uh, Clarkson, especially people that you wouldn't expect to blow by our our guards uh, so easily and so often. Um, it's, and then Pirtle, uh not at the you know at the rim, but not contesting as he was earlier in the season and getting the blocks as he was getting. Um, so I mean. I kind of expected the Utah ones. I was kind of checking in and, in and out of those because I was a little busy during those. But I kind of knew what was coming. And I think kind of Greg Popovich knows, too. You, you saw how he did the rotations in that last game. I think he's kind of just preparing for this final seven games in which they at least have the Kings who aren't, you know, an elite team. One of the only <laughs> seven remaining that they're not going to face an elite team. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. I, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do going forward, but I'm, I'm not too surprised by the results besides the Celtics uh, collapse. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of what you said there was that Utah is just a bad matchup. I mean, when the, <laughs> in the first game of the year, the Jazz led by 31 on San Antonio. Then they led by 25, and then now they led by um, 41. So, I mean, you can just see, and it's more of a mathematical, um, you know, aside from the talent that Utah has as well and, and just their team, it's just the mathematical part of it, the fact that, like, the Spurs don't shoot many threes. Utah is a great defensive team and not giving up threes. And then, you know, Utah just takes a bunch of threes. So, mathematically, <laughs> you're just going to fall apart. And, and the Jazz did struggle in that second game, which is why it was a little bit closer to make their threes. I think they shot. Uh, 33% or something like that, yeah. or 31%. And then, of course, they shot their normal percentage you know, in that, in that, in that last game, and that's why we saw them up by 41. So, yeah, I kind of expected, just like you, the two Utah losses. The, the, the Philly one was very surprising. The San Antonio Bears lost that one. Of course, you know, like you said, you know, they should not have lost that, that game against Boston. So the state of the team, where they stand right now, um, you know, there's seven games left in the season as, as of uh, Thursday evening that Josh and I are recording. They are thir- the Spurs are 31 and 34 out west, 10th out west, basically. Um, they're now, they've slipped to 20th on offense. So a, a week ago when I recorded, they were 18. So we've seen a little bit of slippage there. And then also on defense, they've slipped, um, you know, from 10th down to 12th. A lot of that's probably what, dealing with these blowout losses. Utah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much a lot of this is going to be Utah. Uh, the uh, the lottery position for this team, you know, let's say they don't get into the playoffs, and right now they'd be, um, you know, in, in the position to get to, thir- to get the 13th pick. Uh, they do have the hardest schedule left in the NBA amongst playoff teams. Uh, and then also, like, like we mentioned earlier, they're on a five-game losing streak. So, um, you know, we're going to get in a little bit Spurs cast. This is into the situation about how the Spurs could fall, get into the playoffs or how they'll fall out. So we'll, go, we'll do a little bit of deep dive in a bit. But let's just, um, you know, Josh, I have just one question. You know, you know what does this team have one more run in them? And, and, and I'm going to explain why in a little bit as, as I get to, to my point here on that. Uh, first is to talk about what's going on with this team. You kind of hinted at this. You know, this team is basically exhausted. They're, they're very tired. Coach Pop admitted that. And I think this is the second time now this season that he's kind of just openly admitted that this team just ran out of gas. He doesn't like to use excuses, but he basically said last night, you know, our cup is pretty empty, <laughs> and, and he's referring to, you know, the schedule. There's been no consecutive days off since All-Star break. Uh, you know, the, the injuries, uh, and then um, also the, all the overtime games have been played recently have kind of just caught up to this team. We see this in a few stats. Um, you know, their, their opponent offensive rebound ha- uh, percentage has slipped from 17th to 20th, so, so teams are getting more offensive boards against them. That's, that's usually a good sign of a hustle stat. Uh, fast break points, the Spurs have decreased from 14th down to 17th, so again, we've seen that there's there's not that energy there to get out on the break. Uh, opponent three-point attempts have also increased from from a fifth. The Spurs were fifth best in limiting threes to now eighth best, and of course that's probably a lot of Utah right there. And then of course it's only three games since he, since he's been out now, but but we were we're already seeing a, a big decline mm-hmm. in, in the number of threes and, and the percentage of threes that the Spurs make with Derek White going out from injury. So so what are your, some some of your thoughts just on on how the team's playing right now? Yeah, so I guess it just depends on what qualifies as a run anymore with these seven last seven games. Um, they're pretty much they're they're playing you know without Derek White is it hits a huge loss um mm-hmm. and not having him on both ends of the floor he's the one that spaces the floor in the starters um in the first place so it's a combination of of Derek and then just how tired they are i know it's and it sounds like an excuse but it's true like you can tell these aren't the same Spurs that were once, you know, 22 and 16 to begin the season when they had their legs and they weren't playing every other night. Um, as far as what they can do, it's going to be really tough the last four games, especially when it's four games and five nights. I mean, that's just brutal. And I think the last two are at home, which makes it even worse with this strange season. <laughs> so, you know, I've been about that this whole season. I, I, I don't know what's going on there, but... Um, I could see them squeaking one or two out. I'm hoping I'm proven wrong, but just the combination of their tired legs and no Derek White and the quality of competition, it's going to be a photo finish for 10th for sure. 
Yeah, so I mean that's 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 what we, let's discuss that real quick. Just the, the remaining schedule, you know, seven games left, like we said. So so it begins Friday that that Spurs casters are probably are probably listening to this episode. It begins Friday night against the Kings in Sacramento. Then they have a back to back on Saturday against Portland. Then they get a day off on Sunday. Then they play on Monday against the Milwaukee Bucks. They come to town against the Spurs. Then they go back on the road and they have a back to back set on Thursday and Friday against the. Uh, or I don't know if that's that right. Thursday, Friday. There's no way the Spurs have Tuesday, Wednesday off. Sorry, that's, let me just check that real quick. Yeah. That looks like an error. So is Thursday? Friday? Huh, okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, they have a back-to-back with the Nets and the Knicks. Uh, and then, of course, like you mentioned, Josh, they have um, a Saturday-Sunday set of the Sun, uh, both just against the Suns two games in a row. I'm just verifying real quick. Yeah, I think that's the four and five nights oh, I was talking okay, about. So, it just doesn't look yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, No, no, it's actually here, – here's what it is. Okay. Um, I just double-checked. So this is a, an error on my part. So they play the Nets and Knicks on Wednesday, Thursday. It is a back-to-back, but it's a Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, right, right. Okay. Not, so, yeah, because I was going to say there's no two days off. Four days in a row, yeah. That's how, that's how you know that, that there's something wrong with well, the schedule when, when there's definitely – We're no all tired. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, So exactly. So, so um, you know, basically that's the schedule they have left to, to the end of se- the regular season. Uh, like I mentioned, there's no consecutive days. Is off. And the reason why I asked it if there's one more run in this team is because just a few weeks ago, when this team had lost five games in a row, I honestly thought they were done. I just thought like, oh, this is it. They're going to go like on a seven or eight game losing streak, and Coach Pops is going to pull the veterans and start playing all the young guys, and you know, they're just going to try to you know maybe get a, a kind of draft pick. But then this team surprisingly um, you know bounced back. Uh, they went seven and three after that 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 five game losing streak until where they're at today, and that that's current five game losing streak. And you know the the big difference though, as you mentioned, Josh, is that you know one Derek White's not not here now, and if uh, you know. He was present for a lot of those ten games mm-hmm. when they went seven to three, and then two is just the, the competition. Like you mentioned, aside from the Kings, all the other six opponents have a winning record. Um, so do you have any? So, what are some of your thoughts on this last um, part of the schedule here? Yeah, I mean, like I said, that the, the last four is what I'm really eyeing on. Um, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if beating the Kings would eliminate them or not. Um, no, Kings Sacramento would still be in play but barely. Okay, barely. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it's going to be I'm going to know more tomorrow honestly, um because it'll probably just be, be between them and the Pelicans uh, at mm-hmm. that point. As far as just the Spurs um the end of their actual schedule, um yeah, I don't I don't really see I'm not that hopeful that they're going to, you know, have a winning record in these like go 4 and 3 or anything like that. Um just because of what we've been seeing lately it doesn't seem like it's going to trend any differently i know you the utah games were just they're kind of i kind of excuse those just because like you said the matchup so i'm i think they will be playing better and they will be having more of a chance in these last games they're not going to be blown out it's just it's just going to be tough yeah, and a, a lot of it too. Just like you know, normally you know, toward the end of the season, you start getting a lot of teams you know resting their play, their best players, right, right. And things like that. But this is a little bit different because you know, um, just like the Suns, they play twice. They're, they're neck and neck with Utah in, in the one-two matchup, and then even like a team like Portland, you know, doesn't want to slip down to them, you know, nine or ten. So they, they're obviously playing. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to be playing tough. Sacramento's going to be giving their best effort because they're still trying to stay in the playing game. And then you know, up east, uh, up in the east, you got you got some different matchups going on there too with, with different kind of seating and stuff like that. So so yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a, just an, an interesting seven games and we'll see what happens with this team uh, going forward. Um, let's go ahead and go to our last topic. And this is, um, you know, just the current situation um, about how the Spurs either get into the playoffs or how they fall out of the, not the playoffs, but the play-in tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so kind of, again, this is, a, this is data that's coming as of Thursday evening, uh, even though the Pelicans and, and Kings don't, don't, don't play on this, on this night. So, um, so here's, here's where everything stands. Um, to get into the playoffs, the Spurs right now are 31-34 and 34 at 10th. The Pelicans are right behind them at 30 and 36, and the Kings are, are 12th at 29 and 37. So, in order for the Spurs to clinch, they, right now, as of right now, they would need to go five and two in their final seven games. Now, that path seems very difficult, but it can get easier if the Pelicans and Kings start losing some games. Um, and, I'll, and I'll go into that in, in a little bit here. Uh, where the tiebreaker situation stands is, um, you know, the Spurs do own the tiebreaker against the Pelicans because they won the season series two to one. The Pelicans are currently one and a half games back. And then, um, you know, like, like, we, like we mentioned, Friday's game is huge in terms of a tiebreaker with the Kings because that is the, just the deciding game. Uh, right now, the Spurs and Kings are one and one this season. So, so Friday's night matchup becomes a huge one for, for these two teams. Uh, and the Kings are currently two and a half games back. Uh, and so, yeah, so, so um, that's basically the path to get in. The path to fall out, there's different ways. Um, you know, let's just, I'm, I'm just going to kind of go through some of the scenarios, and, and I'll post this on Twitter because I know it's going to be a lot of records that I'm about to read off here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, the worst uh, scenario would be for the Spurs to not win a game, uh, another game this season. In that situation, they go 0-7. Well, in order for the Pelicans or Kings to get in, they'd, they'd both need to go 2-4 and 4 to pass San Antonio. 
Uh, if the Spurs go one and six in these last seven, the Pelicans need to go three and three. If they go two and five, Pelicans four and two. Pe- Spurs three and four, five and one, and then Spurs four and three. Pelicans need to go undefeated six and zero, oh. and then like like we mentioned, five and two to kind of just clinch for San Antonio. So basically, you know, every time Spurs win a game, it gets tougher for for the Pelicans or the Kings. So uh, so, so what are some of your thoughts on this? On these, you know, how it's going to play out here? Yeah, this is great to see because I've been kind of wondering. It's it's hard to kind of just look at the standings and be like, <laughs> how many do they have to win exactly? Um, I'm looking at probably, I mean, it kind of looks, when you say the Spurs have to go two and five and the Pelicans would have to go four and two, that seems very doable. Um, even with this roster without Derek White and how they're playing, um, cause the Pelicans, I don't trust them going four and two. Like they, mm-hmm. they've been just as inconsistent as, as the Spurs have been, uh, recently. Um, so if they could get that Kings one, it's going to be in my mind, pretty much a lock, almost a lock for me that they can at least get one more and that we can trust the Pelicans to not, <laughs> to not go like five and one or, or something like that. Um, so it still looks, I'm, I'm still more leaning towards, they're going to get the 10, maybe about 65%, 70 instead of 90, like I was last week. Um, yeah. but yeah, I, I'm curious what, what your thoughts on that? Like if, if you could put a percentage on it or what you think. So I was obviously, you know, last week, a week ago, I was more confident because I even said, I, I think I said something along the lines of, or it might've been two weeks ago when, when I had Vicky on where I said something like they're closer to be, to moving up in the standings than they are to falling out <laughs> right. is, is where they were. And now, you know, when, when you just look at the record, it looks, it looks like, oh, they're, they're about to fall out. When you say, when you say Spurs are 31, 34, Pelicans 30, 36, it looks like, oh my gosh, that's so close. Yeah. But then when you actually break it apart and see exactly the situations the Spurs need to go through and, and the mountain that the um, Pelicans and, and, and Kings need to uh, uh, climb to get into the playoffs, it, it looks a little bit more like like a, like a safety net for San Antonio, mm-hmm. so I'm with you. I think like there's a, as long as they win tomorrow against the Kings, because that's probably that might be like their last win if, if you know if, <laughs> yeah. if, if those other teams you know play really well. Um, well, then I, I think that um, yeah, I'm about I'm like about 60, 65 percent um, confident that the Spurs will get, at least get into the 10 seed and, and get the playing game. I, ca- I can't see them falling out, and and the reason for that too is because you know we haven't even talked about the, the Pelicans and Kings schedules. Those two teams as well, you know, they have some easy games on their schedule as well, but but there's a lot of difficult games for them as well. The Pelicans play Philly, the, the Grizzlies, the Mavericks, Golden state and the lakers these are all teams also you know being very competitive right now because they want to fight to stay into yeah. the play you know not not get into the, that nine or ten seed or seven eight basically uh then the kings also have you know the spurs like we mentioned um they do get okc twice the Kings, so they're yeah. lucky there but then they get <laughs> memphis twice and they get utah so again these are teams that are that are so competing as well so so yeah i, I just think that right now i'm kind of with you where i think that um especially if they if they win this game on friday that 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 they're, they're in a better position and, and you know if they win that game friday i think i'm gonna be i'm gonna be a little bit um you know just more i think my my my, my um confidence in them getting into that that 10 spot and clinching um, or getting there is maybe like a 70 percent if they win this game against the kings but again something to watch because yeah like like we like we both mentioned you know, this team um you know we'll just see what happens and and uh kind of like like i said you know they, they did bounce back from the last five game losing streak but these, these circumstances now are way different with Derek yeah. out and just you know we don't know this team looked like they were just like out of gas last time but they, they figured it out later on but again i don't know maybe this really is this team out of gas mm-hmm. but again that could just be the utah you know matchup just horrible for them so i don't know there's just all, all sorts of different ways and it'll be a really interesting week uh week and a half here coming up in this last part of the, of the regular season and then um, something else i was looking at just just randomly was mm-hmm. that um i still don't think they'll get consecutive days off even if they get into the nine or ten seed because <laughs> oh uh, the the planned game game one is is on the 18th which is uh and the spur season ends on the 16th so they so they're just getting Get one day off again and then they'll have to go right back to play. Oh my, so, I didn't even think yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something I was looking at. Uh, just, you know, I was trying to figure out the, uh, the NBA hasn't put up the official schedule for those <laughs> games, but it says it begins on the 18th. So yeah, that's, that's something else to, to keep in mind. All right, Spurs cast listeners, don't forget don't forget to visit projectspurs.com. We have a lot going on over on the site. Um, Stephen Stephen Anderson continues to to keep you um, you know uh, updated with the analysis of of, his, of the games after each game. Uh, Michael De Leon is continuing to, to provide game previews, and also he brought he brought up this cool analytical piece called the uh, leftover notes and quotes uh, that that he's brought back uh, this past week. Um, Benjamin Bornstein's getting you prepared for the draft with um, his latest Spurs prospect watch, which is over Moses Moody. And then um, uh, Rocky Garza Jr. wrote recently, um, you know, he, he kind of looked ahead at the Spurs' difficult season-ending schedule. So Rocky provided some uh, thoughts and analysis there. And then we have a, a big thing coming up on Project Spurs called um, Tim Duncan Week because we know that next weekend Tim, Tim Duncan is getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And Josh, you, you've been, you know, you've been behind this and you've been really been um, gearing, uh, working on this. Uh, and so, so you know, the mic is yours. Go ahead and tell the, the listeners about what, what to expect from Tim Duncan Week and all the different things you pr- you've um, created for it. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, I've been, yeah, I've been working on this pretty much since December. It's just kind of like a personal project I, I have um, about Tim Duncan. It's uh, 
basically a week long uh, series of articles about his career, you know, opponents he's faced, uh, things like that. A lot of uh, good stuff in there that I was researching for for months. Um, Project Spurs comes into it on, I believe, Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm going to be dropping the top five moments against Kevin Garnett and then um, the top five moments against Kobe Bryant because of the, those are the other two um, Hall of Famers that are going to be joining Tim on Saturday. Um, so that's something that to look forward to at uh, Josh810 on Twitter. Um, I'm going to be kind of writing for uh, – I'm going to have a couple articles here and there um, throughout the week. So I'm very excited about it. It's going to be starting this Sunday on the 9th. Okay, so again, Spurs guest is make sure you're visiting projectspurs.com. Uh, he's got th- those two pieces, uh, you know, on on Sunday the night starts, uh, and also follow him on Twitter, and and that's that's where else you can see the where where, where the other pieces will be at as well. Um, so thanks again to Josh for joining me here on the Spurs cast, and also to Michael DeLeon for mixing and producing this episode. From all of us at Project Spurs, stay safe and have a great day. Yeah.